Hey, what's up? It's Kenny Roy. Thank you guys for joining us for this webcast. It is a little after 2.30. Uh, just a few minutes behind the schedule. It's okay. We're going to make up for it in the air. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, this is Mike Johnson. Mike, uh, dude, thanks for coming in, dude. Great, I, I, uh, I'm, I am in awe of this, man. Mike is part of the very, very small, very exclusive group of people in the world that have made an entire feature film on their own and kind of to make matters I don't know worse or better uh, depending on when you look on it his two features that he's made on his own are fully animated so um, Mike I know you uh, uh, probably have a lot to uh, uh, share with us today but uh, first I think I'll show them the teaser for uh, Warriors of Kitchery the film you just now finished mm -hmm. and um, you guys can uh, check it out and enjoy it so let me play for you uh, Warriors of Kitchery uh, teaser, uh, please enjoy. All right, where do we start, um, Mike? So um, I think probably everyone's wondering. Um, the first thing that they want to know is is um, how did you do this all on your own? Certainly, you didn't keyframe animate the whole thing. So right. maybe talk about your process. Well, when I looked at it before I started it, before I did the first film, Captara, I just thought to myself, I need to take on all these tasks. I need to do motion capture, I need to do modeling, I need to do texturing, I need to do sculpting. So I just figured out how am I going to do all those jobs? You know, I can't focus on any one of those tasks just, you know, too much. I had to just touch everything. I needed to do, you know, sculpting, okay, yeah, that looks great. Okay, modeling, yeah, that looks great. Texturing. So I just made sure I got to you know, I did one character, mm -hmm. and the main character for each film, I made sure I got it to a point where they were looking really great. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stop there. No more detailed. And I would just do every other character just like that, and you have a consistency over the whole film. And it, so, so you basically, when you, I mean, you did this all on your own, mm -hmm. and you took, it's 82 minutes long, yeah. right, so feature length, mm -hmm. and it has... Um, it has mocap mo uh, animation, a little bit of keyframe as well, like yeah. the dragon, um, the dinosaurs as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so where were you in your sort of like artistic or technical talent when you started this film? When I started the second one, yeah. I was 100% confident I was going to be able to do it. Yeah. Because after I did on Cap... I was, I was, it was a different story on Captara. Um, I was really nervous when I did when I started on Captara because I had you know I no one I could talk to to say hey how do how do I do this it yeah, was it right. was unheard of yeah and so I I had to learn as I went along it was like trial and error times a thousand right it was like if the second something didn't work push it to the side and try something else. now when you say trial and error times a thousand I bet yeah. you a lot of people are thinking that what you're talking about is a very long production process for, for this film, and I think people will be very surprised to hear that it actually only took you 
18 months. Yeah. To this, which is a normal production cycle for a um, for a film that has dozens and dozens and dozens of artists, if not hundreds of artists, on it. So, um, how did you how did you go about like uh, laying it out in front of you so that yeah. you knew how much time stuff was going to take? Okay. Well, I, I looked at. Um, I took the big picture. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a 90-minute film. Okay, I need characters. Okay, I need environments. Okay, I need motion capture. You know, I need all the big things that that would make up the whole movie. And then I would break it down. So I'd say, okay, how many characters? Well, there's there's 15 characters in the whole movie, or and there's there's 10 environments. And I was like, okay. So I started to be able to visualize what I needed to get done to make the film. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I just I, I just went at it every day, you know, eight, 10 hours a day, creating environments, you know, creating the characters. It was, it was just nonstop, you know, mm -hmm. seven days a week. Okay, let's go back to the very, very beginning when you were thinking about the idea for this film. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, from the teaser, we get a little bit of a piece of it, but for yeah. you, what's, what's the film about? The film is, it's a simple storyline. Um, it's about these two alien tribes on this planet that, you know, we, I call Kitri. Uh, it's, a, it's a desert planet. It's, it's dying. Um, like the planet's alive, you know, like a Final Fantasy spirits within, like it's, you know, it's a, the planet's alive. It's dying. And, you know, every once in a while, these, these huge, you know, oases spawn out of the ground. And, but then they die off quickly, and all the the animals and the beings that are left, they you know try to get the resources, and and then after that it goes into a classic you know good guy bad guy you know good tribe bad tribe you know fight they they're fighting over the you know some of the last resources on the planet. Okay, um, and when you were beginning this film, did you have everything totally set in stone, or did, was it like a little bit more of a to flowing process. It was a totally free flowing, organic process. You know, it, because I was the only one involved, I could sit there and say, "No, I don't like that scene." Like, "No, I'll get rid of that." Or, you know, "Oh, I have a good idea. Let's let's put in this shot." Or, you yeah. know, oh, "Wouldn't it be cool if this happened?" So, like, you know, I said, like we've said, talked about before, pros and cons. You know, that was a pro was that I could make a decision on in the moment, but a con is, you know, you're only working with yourself, and so it's like you're, you know. Your creativity level is only so much. You know, you, you don't right. you don't have other people's input, right. which would have helped out. Yeah, probably. Uh, you you've also told me before though that if you uh, you believe that the animator, artist, director of the future is is all packed into one. Could and, be. Yeah. And and so talk about that a little bit. How how you see films being made in the in the future. In the future. Well, what, what is happening right now that I, I think people might not realize is that the technology is insane that we have today that's available to us sitting right in front of us. You know, technology that, you know, five years ago we would have never thought was possible. Um, you know, reading these old, you know, modeling books, you know, they're totally defunct. You know, like yeah. the, the modeling techniques. I didn't use any of those. Um, so the in the future, it's just going to get even crazier you know to the the tools that we're going to have to be able to do these things it's it's going to be you know smaller studios compact studios uh of you know jet 3d generalists or whatever um and you know they'll all be doing whatever they're doing and it's like it will just be a crazy little compact creation process and, and create great looking films yeah do, do what does that mean do you think um for the way that these films are distributed here take one step forward yeah. so that you're in the light i want your black shirt yeah, disappearing yeah, yeah. it is a little bit that's all right we'll roll the punches here um what does it mean um for it, how people are going to be um seeing these things uh, uh, yeah. presumably if there's a lot more of these things kind of being made we need to uh, evolve the distribution so that people can access these a lot more right it's it's already starting to happen um you know when you look online and you talk about uh, video on demand, you know, aggregators, there, there's all of a sudden they're coming out of the woodwork. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's 20, 30 of these companies that are ready to grab content and get it up online. Mm -hmm. You know, the traditional, you know, sales side of films, you know, it probably will still be around, but you know, 
it's it's looking like it's it's going in this direction where it's like people are are being able to create content a lot cheaper, a lot quicker, and they need to get it out there. They don't have time to sit around for an agent, you know, or, or you know, someone else to go and, and you know pitch it and do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just one avenue of where you know this all this might take us. Do you think um, there will be room for everyone that wants to do it? Um, I mean, if if there are people that want to do it and and they take the steps to make that happen i i don't know i mean you know it's like everyone wants to do it you know everyone wants to do it uh everyone wants to do everything um you know if if they can do it and they can get a group of guys together you know like i'm a huge fan of ralph bakshi and you know i i was listening to a, an interview at comic-con that he had a few years back and he's talking about get a couple of guys, get into a garage, you know, make a movie, you know, just star for a year, make a movie. And it's, it's, he's right. You know what I mean? Like if you want to make a movie, get, get it together, you know, make, make something happen. Mm -hmm. It's like the technology's here. Any, you know, anyone can do it. It's, it's, you just have to take, you know, a, a bunch of steps and, and put yourself in, in, a, in a position to make that happen. One thing I like about you is you're extremely humble. So when you say anyone can do it, I still think that there are a lot of people that are watching that are going to be thinking to themselves, "Well, you're not anyone." That's that's that that's all up here. Then you need you know that you need to change that that way of thinking. You can't think, yeah, you people out there. No, yeah, anyone can do it if you're motivated and that's what you want to do. That's what I did. I I decided I wanted to do that. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had no confidence that I could do it. But I had a little bit of a drive to try it, you know, and, and, and everything fell in place. So, um, I, I, Your company is called Gorilla Mation. Yeah, that's, that's my little personal It's pretty company. cute. Yeah. I, li I like that. But one the thing that you told me earlier... I'm not sure if you want me sharing this, but you have your mocap set up in your apartment. Yeah, yeah. Your 12 camera setup. Yeah. And it's in your bedroom. Yeah. My bedroom. So you wake up and it's right over your bed. Yeah. So you just flip your bed up and then boom, yeah. there's your mocap. Boom, state. there it is. There it is. So I'm not sure what. Um, it's kind of like I, I feel like you're like living example of someone like when you're feeling like I don't want to. I want to exercise today or whatever yeah. and then all of a sudden on your Facebook page someone like pops up and they've got like they're missing a leg or something and they, like they're finishing a marathon and it says like what's your excuse yeah I feel like you're like living example of like what's your excuse like yeah. go and make it make your make your mark yeah go out there make, like make a film if you're a you know keyframe animator and you want to be doing like Pixar level um, stuff and that's what you want to do you can still do it you don't have to do it um, his way or his subject matter you can do it your way you can make a, a cute little film mm -hmm. short film whatever it's your it's your content right yeah that's right yeah um, what would you say to um, people that are um, uh, just starting out they they want to maybe make their mark mm -hmm. and they don't know really where to start yeah. uh, with with it might take yeah yeah it might take a while to figure out how you fit into what it is you want to do um, and me in particular when I when I first started learning Maya I wanted to make a movie that was what I wanted to do I literally said the words how can I use Maya to make a movie and and, and I mean I had no idea it was possible and I don't know how I was gonna do it uh, I never said, oh, I want to be an animator. I never said I want to be a modeler. I said those words to myself. I said, I want to make a movie. So um, everything starting from that point was, how do I do that? How do I make that possible? So if you sit down and you decide, I want to be an animator, you just you start going through that process. You go, how do I make that possible? You know, what do I need to do? Tutorials, you know, like, you know, Hour, thousands of hours animating just you know it might take you a while to figure out what you want to do but it's like you know eventually you know you're gonna to have to decide you know I mean how long can you sit right. around going I don't know what I want to do right well let me ask you just one last um, thing about your, your film yeah um, it's completed 
Yes. Um, you're looking for distribution right now. Yes. And um, you're looking basically at, at all models of distribution, licensing, like a straight up sale or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, would you um, say that? Uh, do you have any advice for people who are maybe g going to embark on their own film, or maybe are in the middle of production on their own film? Um, maybe some advice for them um, looking, you know, ahead of the uh, film completing, maybe for some um, outlet avenues or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's tough. It's it's tough for me right now. You know, getting my film out there and getting people to see it. Um, you know. Uh, are you considering film festivals um if you know yeah it, you know it would be it would be nice you know and i i think it would be good exposure um it's not a priority for me to do that mm -hmm. um and i mean that is might, that because you don't think that there's enough people who know about the opportunity that exists with investing in a film like this that are going to go to a festival it's more like live action and like awards for like yeah. you know sort of like um, cutesy or like you know riveting animation. It's not really like a uh, a place for animations that are you know like can stand up next to like any other yeah, like yeah. action movie. Yeah, yeah, I, and and that went through my mind a lot. Was I mean, it's an action movie. That's what it is. It is an action know? movie, and and yeah, I I think what you're saying is right. I I just sit there and go, you know. When people see Ori's of Kitchery, I don't think that they know exactly what they're looking at. You know, right. like it, and they're gonna sit there and compare it to what the next, you know, th you know, two hundred million dollar animated film is, uh -huh. and, and, and they might, and they might be like, oh, you know, what is this? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like this one. So I think it's it's early enough where, uh, you know, people might not know what it is, and they, right. you know, they don't know anything about it. You might yeah we probably have to educate not only the audience but also like distributors to like figure out like where there because there definitely are like millions of people who watch like anime and other yeah. like action cartoons like heavy metal or or spawn or i'm not even sure if they have any new stuff with that but mm -hmm. um definitely people out there that want to watch yes yeah, i'm sure yeah um, so that's Warriors Kitchery. Um, is there a website you'd like to plug for that? Um, there's not really. I mean, I, I have, you know, my personal website, gorillamation.com. I mean, it's, okay. it's, you know, it's just, it's just a, a fun little experience to go and check it out, but okay. it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. So we'll, um, I, I will put that back up on screen at the end of the uh, stream here, but I'd like to ask you some, uh, other questions like un uh, unrelated to, um, your film right now, but yeah. just because you are in... I think a unique position because you have played pretty much every single role in, in the film. Um, last week I had Joe Cassander on, who's an animation director and director, and we were talking about the whole um, mocap debate with um, Andy Serkis, yeah. where he's basically lobbying to get um, mocap actors to be considered for the acting awards, like at the Oscars and, mm -hmm. and whatever. Do you have any initial uh, reaction to that? Um... I mean, it, it you know, it, I think it's just the evolution of of you know, you know the the industry and what's happening. You know, I, I think if they do, you know, give out these great performances that make a huge impact, you know, why not? Yeah, why not? I mm -hmm. mean, if if that's what people want and they and they are con and they consider that, you know, because they are great they are great performances, you know, mm -hmm. and it's. It does make sense, and I think again because of the, where we are right now with technology, again people don't they don't even think about that. It's so early that they're like you know oh you know oh well, maybe so it's it's early enough you know who knows maybe in ten years from now it'll be a no brainer. It's like yeah these guys are you know these guys are doing it they deserve awards. Yeah. Yeah. What. Um, uh... Have you, um, you, you told me a, a quick anecdote about how when you were starting out your first film, mm -hmm. you, um, you realized basically that you weren't not going to be able to hire mocap actors and yeah. you said to your producer, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just do all the mocap. And he said, "Well, you you can't do that. You're not a, you're not an actor, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but you didn't end up doing that. So, in a large way, you know, you." 
did turn out to be a pretty good actor because he, yeah. you, you put it all together. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering if it, I, I was talking with Joe after our webcast, and one thing he said pointed out was that the uh, Academy nominated, um, I think it was Beauty and the Beast for Best Picture, mm-hmm. and after that happened, everyone was like, "Oh, well, that we can kind of see that animated films really are not." just for kids and they can actually be great filmmaking so then they made the best animated feature yeah, yeah. maybe what they'll do is they'll make the best motion capture performance yeah. or best digital yeah. performance alongside the best you know best actor and best, best yeah. actress or, or I could whatever. see that I could see that happening yeah um, another thing I wanted to get your take on was um, how is outsourcing and sort of like, you know, like the global kind of race to the bottom, chasing subsidies, all that stuff, yeah. how is that going to affect like people like you? Um, I, I don't I don't think it would. I don't think it's going to affect me. Um, I mean, if, if, you know, I'm doing... Well, let me, let me paint you a scenario. Okay. Right now, if DreamWorks can make a animated feature for like $100 million, and like Prana can make one that most audiences, like a half, half of the audience can't tell the difference between that and a DreamWorks um, film. Yeah. And the other, the other half can, but they'll, they'll still go see it. Yeah. Um, that $100 million to like $20 million, I mean, that's a 80% you know, reduction in budget. Yeah. Doesn't that also kind of mean that, um, considering like labor costs and, and, and whatever, that even at your level, that that kind of scaling would, would happen and there would be like Indian animators that are making it for like 80% less than even you can? Um, or no? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've been involved in a lot of outsourcing, at, you know. It was you? Yeah. <laughs> no, in, in, in past companies. And, sure. Blame the companies now. Um, it, it, you know, I think, I think what it came down to, um, at that point was, you know, was the work, you know, was it satisfactory or not? And in in my experience at that time, it it, it really wasn't. It wasn't, you know, up to par with what we were looking for. Yeah. And we stopped and we stopped doing that. So, okay. I mean, it's. It's a, I, I don't know if, you know how much I could you know dive into that. So for, for, for your purposes though, there, you don't really see where you could shrink the budget or production any more than you already have. Yeah, I think, I think so far it's shrunk for, it so much. <laughs> it, you know I, I almost you know want to think that you know these uh, companies in India might want to outsource you to know, you. Yeah. <laughs> That's hysterical, man. That's hysterical. Um, there's a lot of influences um, I saw in your film, and we we don't have to talk about all of them. But um, what do you think, just in general, about animators bringing their their like you know little snippets from like movies they like or or TV shows or characters they like or whatever into their work? Um, like, what do I think about it? What do you think? Is it is is it good, or do you, do you try to stay? as far away from like you know bringing those things in as oh. possible or oh. just load it up no I, I yeah everything i mean it's almost like you know the film wars of kitri it was just a you know curmudgeon of like all of the films i've ever seen you know what i mean like it was it was all you know all of my influence and in, all my influences from my whole life yeah. came out in the in the film and so i mean yeah, definitely. That's that's you know the whole cycle of you know artistic interpretation and mm-hmm. you know just regurgitating you know co- instances of other of other work. There's an, there's another thing that um, one time a student asked me if um, they are competing for jobs with somebody that has like twelve hours a day to animate. And they only have a couple, or like let's say they animate and they also play a sport and they play an instrument. Mm-hmm. You know, they have like these these other int- interests and whatever. Yeah. And like, how are they ever going to compete with somebody that like can animate twelve hours a day? Yeah. 
My answer to them was that you probably aren't competing with someone who can animate 12 hours a day because someone who animates 12 hours a day, they're not outside. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. not talking to people. Oh, yeah. They're going to turn into a weirdo a little bit and like their performances are yeah. eventually going to like fall off yeah. a little bit. So I told them like, don't worry about that guy. You need to worry about the person who actually like took a year to like travel Europe with a backpack and you know like slept on like strangers couches and you know animated for like four or five hours a day like you know by candlelight on his little laptop yeah. that's the guy you got to worry about yeah right so kind of to turn this over onto onto you won't there be a point when a one-man show like you mm. needs to like stop and then go out and get some experiences and mm. like have like maybe even like messed up stuff happen to you just yes. so you can fill that bank up again well I you, that's one way of doing it <laughs> um, you know I, I I I'm of the opinion that you know I don't necessarily need to have you know all these crazy experiences you know, I, I, it's, you know, your imagination, you know, you can have those experiences in your head, you know, you don't need to go out and live them. Um, so, but in the end, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, who anybody should be afraid of anybody, you know, it, it's, you know, be afraid of, of, you know, you not being true to what you're doing, you know, like I, to me, I was always, I wasn't competing with anybody. I was competing with myself. And, and you know, and getting better, and 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 you know, 3D animation was the one thing that I could look at and say I can get good at this because it's all right in front of my face. Yeah. If if I'm looking at something and it it's not at the par with you know something else that I see, well make it make it up to par. And it's like, well, how do you do that? Well, you know, figure out how you do that. It's like there's always there's an answer for everything. There's a solution for everything. You just it's it's real simple when you get in that mode of just making it happen. That's that's what it is. Is make it happen. And like what you're saying about, oh, this guy's doing this and he's animating for 12 hours. It was like with me and Warriors of Kitchery. If if I was out, you know, partying, you know, partying or drinking, I wasn't making the movie. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, if you're over here, you're not doing this. And for me, it was like, I'm not right now. I'm not going to do anything. Like you said being in the vacuum. I was like, I'm just going to make the movie and that's it. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to go out. And I did have to sacrifice a lot, but it was worth it to me in the end. So. Okay, fair enough. I don't, th those are wise words, I think, to, uh, to end on. I, I, I think I really appreciate you coming in, man. Mike Johnson, um, let's, uh, we'll put the uh, website URL up uh, here in a second, but um, uh, thanks, you, thanks for joining us today, and I uh, hope to see you uh, every week here uh, during the summer for another special guest uh, webcast. I'm Kenny Roy. Again, Mike Johnson, thanks a lot. Uh, rock on, guys.